Hey guys, my name is Billy Roberts. I'm a concept artist and art director. And more recently, I've moved into a role that is CCO, and I've been enjoying that role. The only downside with a role like that is you are no longer doing as much artwork. So I've decided to start creating more YouTube content to keep my skills sharp. And I enjoy making content. So today we're going to be talking about key image creation and a few finer points in terms of production, pipeline and design. So first off, we're starting with some thumbnails. This is to get my brain activated in composition, value, light on dark, and various other fundamentals. This is a great exercise for anyone at any stage. Highly recommend doing these types of thumbnails and studies. I've decided to walk you guys through my process today, start to finish, inclusive all the way to the end. And I do have the entirety of what I did, how I did it, and a bit more of a breakdown than last time I made an image like this for YouTube. So sit back and relax and enjoy what I'm about to show you. Should be fun. There's some really good key learnings here that we can pull from. This was a great exercise for myself and I plan on doing this at least two to three times a month for my personal development. And at this point, just to keep sharp visually and with the tools. So we're starting with the thumbnail stage. I didn't exactly use these thumbnails. I treated this more for myself as a, a brain exercise. That's possibly the best way to put it. So I found it extremely useful just to get my brain back into that way of thinking and working. And you'll notice through this process that I'm staying extremely zoomed out. I'm genuinely treating it as if it's a thumbnail. I'm tr not trying to zoom in and focus on details that aren't important. I'm focusing on value breakup, shape, flow, repetition, and just general elements that give me a nice composition. So this one here, I spent a little bit more time on. I was just enjoying the flow of the foreground leading into the midground and then punching these harsh white highlights through in that midsection for those buildings. Kind of a repetitious pattern between all three so far. That was my core objective was to focus on the simple stuff and get that stuff working right. Now this one I wanted to add in here for you guys, this was on purpose when I was thinking about making this YouTube video for everyone. Simplicity. Keep things simple. We don't need to have crazy shapes and design. This is probably one of the strongest thumbnails I did. And it's a plane in a circle. Here's some notes. My marks are not random. 
is me placing shapes that are applying all of the basic rules I've created for myself. This is how I think about these rules as an artist, or at least this is how it feels to my brain. It's like playing tug of war. And also, we're constantly reminded of some of the fundamentals that make a good composition. And that's a balancing act. Next, we move into the sketches. I decided, all right, we're going to make a key. I'm going to do some d a design pass. So we did, I think all in all, it was six sketches just to stimulate some language parameters. It's good to talk about parameters because limitation or narrowing in on a shape language or a design language you know essentially they're the same thing but narrowing in on that and limiting yourself it's really important to do that to keep things cohesive and consistent it also allows for extreme use of some of those fundamentals with shape flow and uh, hierarchy breakup and repetition so you'll see me executing some of those theories that I pulled out I, I'm trying to keep it to around four uh, fundamentals to focus on each time I do a design pass I feel like if you add too many and you're trying to like think of everything you kind of end up creating nothing so it's almost like baking a cake or you have like a special recipe you don't want like sugar tastes good right but you don't want to put sugar on a hot dog because that's not <laughs> the right food to put it in so if that's if we use that analogy of design is like a recipe and the recipe creates a certain taste of genre that's a good way of putting it with design so I'm really focusing on repetition and language here trying to get some of that stuff to read clearly and thematically throughout for harmony so that's why these profile sketches are just such a good way to explore what you're thinking really put your mind down onto a canvas efficiently and fast so you you don't end up feeling bogged down when you're doing sketches like this or at least for myself i don't i could probably do realistically maybe 50 to 60 of these a day i would be very burnt out afterwards but I could get you know that many done and that kind of explains why it's so good because it's pretty easy on the mind and easy on the eyes to execute design um, in this format So I was really happy with the way that this was going. I was enjoying the, the languages that I was extracting. Some of it was a little, a little intense, a little complicated, which I knew that I would have to simplify that further in 3D. I'm not, well, I could, but I'm, I wasn't willing to sit down and hand model every shape for the YouTube video. I think that kind of defeats the purpose of concept art as well. If an AD approved one of these sketches and wanted me to take it further, the following stages before 3D, uh, if they wanted like a key image uh, of the location as well, I would probably do a breakup pass before the key. And obviously in a production setting, you would be doing a breakout 45 front and back of this type of 
design, you'd also be doing the interiors. Sketch first, breakup second, render third. That type of process. Obviously each production is different. Efficiency is the name of the game. But uh, that's probably what I would do. Yeah, I'm really digging the, the shapes that I was using here. Right? It's got a really nice hierarchy, weight, feel to it. It's like this high fantasy elvish, but then brought back into this primitive um, sort of shape language. I was really enjoying that mixture of design. And I just thought I'd color them in so it's easier for you guys to see what they actually look like. And I grabbed a PNG to put in the video so you guys can see a high res version of that. And there they are. So after this, we move into the 3D process. So here I had a pretty good idea of my narrative. I started building up a bit of a story, a bit of a backstory to this design language. And I was imagining this forest wetlands area and these huts that a f you know multiple families would live in almost like a community uh, home so I started at this point I was starting to really think about narrative design as well and I was trying to in the later stages trying to get myself a little further ahead with that. So a little bit of technical information on the 3D side here. It's really primitive forms. I used a couple, I honestly cannot remember where I got the rock stuff from, but I have a lot of rock assets really just to speed up some of my uh, compositions really and I used a couple of those rocks and just used some modifiers like radial array to set up some of the base for me to work from I'm also using some grass assets and tree assets that I stretch to block in my ivy. Now at this point I'm not actually trying to finish the image inside of 3D. A lot of a lot of artists will spend an abundant amount of time in 3D to really get further ahead on the 2D. But I feel by doing that, at least for myself, by doing that, I end up almost killing the artwork. It feels quite muted and endeared and unplayful. There's just something about 2D art that has a, has a rawness to it that I really enjoy. Personally, I really enjoy a bit of both. So me placing like what I'm doing now, I'm like stretching a tree and using it as ivy. Um, it's more or less just testing overgrowth. And I'm just trying to block in color and, and break up as, as much as I possibly can. But deep down I know that I'm gonna go back in and probably rework all of that in 2D. So that's why I'm not very particular about what I'm doing with this stuff. It, 
obviously I'm not trying to make a mess. I do keep it fairly clean. But it does help with some of that testing that otherwise you would do in 2D anyway. So that's all that is. You'll see me using my curves, creating some interesting little shapes and trying to pull from those design pass profile sketches and trying to come up with that elvish hut feel that I was gravitating towards. So I wasn't so sure about the rock placement, so I just decided to have a bit more fun here with the framing, a little bit more focused uh, framing and composition, more more about leading the eye through the image with the light shafts or breaking up the image with the light shafts that was where I decided to go uh, next with the image at this stage really what I'm trying to do with me moving the lighting around like that is I'm trying to wash out the blacks in the darks with like a an ambient and then I add my sun back in because Blender has a really good job well it does a really good job of trying to make everything really black in the shadows and for an artist that is honestly not great that's really annoying if you're trying to go for a more soft value or not a soft value but your value groups are slowly introduced that's not ideal so I started the render I thought that's pretty good let's go and I rendered out what I needed which was a few layers to get me started in the 2d process so in the 2d process I started with mist normal shadow and an object ID. I didn't end up using the object ID probably just because of how overgrown the scene is. It's not as, you know, if it was sci-fi or something like that, object ID is amazing. But you can see instantly with that mist pass, I'm able to drop, drop the background away in value and basically get a a true mist happening or an artistic version of mist I then grab my shadow layer and set that to lighten duplicated it and was able to brush in me some lightening up some of the mid ground slash background elements to help with the bleed off into that mist So at this point, I'm staying extremely zoomed out. I might zoom in here and there if I see like a problem or I'm trying to lasso something very carefully because I don't want it to get messy or dirty. But a majority of the time, I'm just using my space bar to move around the canvas and I'm trying to keep pretty zoomed out. Well, as much as I, much as I can, I'm trying to be conscious of that. And what it gives you in the end is you can just use smaller brushes, but you're sort of seeing what those brushes are making for you as you're working the image up. When you zoom in, you quite often get lost in the details, and you get lost in the the finite things that don't matter and with that mindset it's a lot more efficient to create images like this so 
So I'm just fixing up some of the composition still, adding a few trees and little details to bleed off certain shapes and at this point it's still very much so in the cleanup. I would call it the cleanup phase from 3D. I'm trying to solidify the direction. I'm trying to remove all of the elements that I didn't like that would have taken way too long in 3D to fix. So it's probably about this point where I start to lock in in my own head that I'm enjoying what I have and I'm going to start to be a lot more subtle with my treatment so a lot of what I'm doing at the moment is value control and value grouping especially in my shadows with a long cast shadow light set up like this it's important to simplify my shadow groups mainly for readability and I feel like if you don't do that and you have a lot of different value groups throughout an image like this it can end up distracting the eyes through the natural flow of the of the image so you see me doing a lot of zooming in and zooming out uh, here's another stage where I started going and mixing up that composition just a little, little bit more and throwing a few additional elements in there into the background add a little campfire at the top like a teepee really starts to make it feel like you know people are living in this fantasy hut and you'll obviously see the warm light coming from from inside which indicates a fireplace of some kind which makes it feel very cozy to me <laughs> so i enjoyed enjoyed that aspect of this image so i think cleanup phase is is over at this point and I'm starting to go into more of a refinement phase and in the refinement phase there's a couple things that I'm looking at for for where I see the image being at the end obviously I'm not trying to make it look like photo realism hyper realism image that's not my intention at all my intention is uh, game design key art so it's not well you know some games are photo realistic but <laughs> it's not one of my skill sets so I'm more interested in that kind of just off realism indication of realism but stylized in some way shape or form is my my interest so I was playing around with some values I think I like got out of my chair and walked backwards in my room and to really get as far away from it as I could he just looked at it when it was more saturated that really helped me make that make that call on what i need to do to make it look the way i want it to look so you you seen me pause and then come back and and then erase all of that saturation 
So using screen layers to layer in some more uh, sun shafts and or, or light catching a, a fog layer. And I'm trying to be as subtle as possible with it. I'm not, I don't want to push it too hard because it can sort of force the eyes around the image in, in areas you're you're not wanting. And at this point, I think I've decided to move into more of a refine and polish. So I started to use photo textures and basically whatever I thought I needed to expedite some of the details. And some photo textures like this one just don't work, so it got deleted. The difficulty with photo textures is they they can sometimes ruin your image if you're not careful so you have to really be picky with the texture itself and pay attention to the amount of noise per texture this, you can remove the noise but oftentimes that then makes it look quite blurry and weird looking So I think I quickly added like a, some posts just to lead the eyes, some lines to break. So now this is true details, this is final, final, final pass. Emphasis on final, because you'll notice I have zoomed in for the first time. And you'll see around in the foliage how I've made use of some ivy textures, photo textures and leaf textures. I'm using it very sparingly, not one for one directly from a photo, but I'm sort of cutting pieces out and using the mixer brush to dabble detail where I need for visual interest. So this is very close to the finish line here. And I think that's pretty much it. And there it is, the cozy fantasy hut. Thanks for watching guys. And I'll see you in the next one.